Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to episode seven of the mechanics of poetry. Uh, I vowed last week that uh, I'm going to start getting even deeper into the nuts and bolts of creating poetry. Today is definitely a step in that direction because we're going to explain and discuss and even create a poetic libretto. Now, what is a poetic libretto? That is the question for today. And we have with us today the creator of the poetic libretto who's going to explain to us what was going on inside his head when <laughs> it all came to be. Doesn't everyone want to know? Inquiring minds want to know what was going on inside the mind of Marvin Lewis Dorsey when he created this. So I'm going to fire the first question right at you, Marvin. How did this happen? I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. Well, okay. well you know what? I, I, you know, it's knowing that I was going to be here with you guys today. I wanted to make sense because I wanted to let you guys know that you know I'm not, I just I didn't throw this thing together. Um, in the late 2020, I started writing. Um, I think I I started writing two chat books, not meaning to, but I think the natural progression from the chat books were to cut down um, the, the amount of poems and the amount of pages that um, I would use to uh, hold a collection of poetry. But it wasn't intentional. I didn't know I was writing librettos until we were probably 20 librettos in, you know? Because I, you know, I didn't know what it was. And I got lost in the writing of just writing and not actually thinking that it would be something, you know? So you're saying that uh, there came a day where you were creating poems and it wasn't enough for a chat book, but you wanted to share them. You know, I didn't want a chat book. You know, yeah. I wasn't under a, a, under a chat book because, yeah. I didn't, I, you know, I had so much to say and I wanted people to um, just get the, 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 meat, the meat and potatoes of it. You know, I didn't want to have a full-fledged um, chat book because it was just too much. You know, I thought I had to cut it down, but I knew I couldn't have it where it was just a broadside. You know? Yeah, and, and there was another thing going on. Uh, if anybody's been witness to this, uh, there's a photographic aspect that took over. Is that correct? You know what? Yeah. It, 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 it was all the, the natural progression, you know, um, I've always taken pictures. Um, I just didn't make it a point to put a poem to it. Um, I think there was a point when I got a new phone and I happened across this um, app in the phone that um, maybe enhanced photos. So um, that just added to um, maybe the expression that the libretto could hold. Yeah. And uh, which leads us to our next question, or my next question, since I know a little bit about this, I, I was a witness. <laughs> All right, so you had these poems. It was not a lot of poems, but it was enough poems to do a feature, right? Yeah, you know, I, I, I found out after reading the librettos a couple of times that if I went to a reading, um, and they gave us maybe like six to seven minutes, I could go through a whole libretto. And what I realized was when I sent my librettos out, um, the reader read straight through the libretto. And what's cool about that is I think really now the way life is so hectic, it's hard to grab someone's attention throughout a whole chat book. But if you can give them a libretto, which is just 16 pages, with a few photos in it, there's a good chance that your reader is going to go straight through all of your poetry and get a better idea of who you are as a poet. Then how often do you go sit down to read someone's chat book and finish it? In one sitting? Sometimes, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But with the libretto, I guarantee, I pretty much can guarantee you, your reader is going to go straight through your libretto from page one to cover to cover. Yeah, I, I, I've experienced that, so I have no <laughs> doubt about that. I just thought it was nifty. Maybe it wasn't intended, but it's very nifty that 
The libretto is just the right size to do a featured reading. You know what? I didn't um, I didn't set out to do that. You know, it, that is true that it is good for a feature, but it wasn't something that I um, had in mind when I was writing these things. And there was another thing that also happened. I remember this. Uh, when you started creating them, you were really on a roll. You were doing them almost daily. And you yeah. wanted to share them, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what yeah. did you do there? You know, that's just my MO. I, I write like that. You know, you witnessed the broadsides. You know, I just write like that. Um, you know, I did want people to see it. You know, um, but that's just me. I, I like sharing my poetry. So for you, uh, librettos are like corn chips. You can't just share one poem. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you don't know, tell the truth, man. You no, know, no. You know, with me, I I truly try to stay out of the way of the inspiration. You know, I I don't sit down and say I'm gonna do this or do that. Um, yeah. What I've been doing with the librettos, I take a picture, and um, most of the time I have time to do it right there. I just write a poem with it. And, you know, I said it somewhere and eventually it ends up in a libretto. Well, you know, just to let a little cat out of the bag, just a little cat. Because <laughs> something unexpected happened to me last night. You know, I would planned uh, to promote Marvin's idea of a poetic libretto because I love the idea that it is larger than a broadside, smaller than a chapbook. So it's, it's easier to get together than a chapbook because it doesn't, it's just not as much material. And it's more substantial than a broadside because the broadside you're just seeing one poem by a person. But the thing that I did not foresee was this guy making me an offer. He was trying to stimulate me to create a libretto. And so what he did was, very sneaky fellow, this Marvin Dorsey guy. He sent me one of those photos. I mean, he had this app and he makes the photos interesting. So if you're on Facebook and you're a friend of Marvin Dorsey, you get to see all these crazy photos he's got that are enhanced by the app. Uh, and he actually showed me yesterday how he did that on the phone. He was like, you do this, 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 that. And it's a bunch of steps, but he's very familiar with it. So he's like, whew, knows what he wants to create. So he sent me one of those photos and he said, okay, write a poem to this photo. And the sneaky guy gave me a great photo because I was like, oh my God, I was totally inspired just looking at this photo. I, I dove right into it, right? I mean, that's what we would normally call ekphrastic poetry, right? Writing from a piece of art. So he created this photo that became a piece of art and it was so easy to dive into. I wrote the poem right away. Now that was no surprise to me. I mean, it was, I was inspired, photo, poem, okay, done. But the thing that surprised me the most was last night, this guy, I mean, how did this even happen? He said, uh, hey, oh yeah. We uh, have the San Gabriel Valley Poetry Festival every April, and we have contests every April, uh, a broadside contest, a chapbook, and a book contest. But then I got the notion, hmm, would it be strange to have a libretto contest? Something that most people don't know a lot about, right? Just the people on the scene, if they've caught Marvin's poetry, maybe that's a good idea. And there were five people audacious enough to create a libretto and send it to Marvin. And uh, two of them are here today for this meeting. That's pretty cool. We'll get into that in a minute. And so Marvin got the idea. He wanted to not just have one winner. He wanted to spotlight all five of these audacious people. So we thought it through. And one thing I could do, being a poetry host, I said, well, all you can have a, a session of Saturday afternoon poetry to spotlight them. And that would be going to become, that's going to be coming on May 22nd. All right, that much I could do. But then this guy, yeah, am I pointing in the right direction? That guy? Or is it that way? <laughs> is it that way? Is it okay? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> He said, I'm going to make a libretto featuring like the librettos. What? It's like an anthology. It's uh, like a, a libretto featuring all five of those poets. 
Oh, I get that. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great idea, right? It's like a showcase, a libretto showcase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, the logistics had to be worked out. If you want people to see, he wanted it to be a collaboration. If you want people to see your photos, Marvin's photos, well, then there's got to be a way for them to see them, right? I mean, what are you going to do? Email them or put them on a website and Marvin has some experience putting things on websites. Please interrupt me if I'm going on. Okay, so are you saying that a libretto is always an ekphrastic po poetry? No, it doesn't have to be ekphrastic. In fact, I am the one person who submitted uh, librettos without photos whatsoever. Because I just I don't take, I don't take good it, photos. But you said you created it based on a photo that he sent you. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's not dependent on that, but I guess this is Marvin's way of getting us to, well, me in particular, but also everybody else now, he wants to drag everybody else into it to generate material. I don't want to drag anybody anywhere. Oh, drag, <laughs> drag. I was kicking, I was kicking and screaming. I was kicking and screaming. This is impossible. I can't write like Marvin Dorsey. You can write like six poems in a day. Who else can do that? You know, it was just impossible. What Don, was, what Don was looking at, you know, I did set up a website with a bunch of pictures and um, for the for the uh, people who put in the, uh, their librettos and their poetry to be librettos. And Mark, and those are some really nice um, poems you've just written over those pictures, which is really cool. I appreciate it. But okay, but I, I, I want to say one thing first, if I may, and then I'm going to shut up. It doesn't have to have pictures in it. Yeah, that's Judy's question. Yeah, and I'm, I'm affirming that because I've already made, I think a two or three librettos and I didn't have photos because I'm not photographically talented. I didn't necessarily uh, see a painting or something to create my poems. I just tried to fit the parameters of what felt like a libretto should be. And it felt like it had to be smaller than a chapbook, larger than a broadside. So I was cool with that. And, and, and I early, just happened to have that number of poems. So it was cool. And early on in the libretto, there were no pictures. There, it was just poems. It, it, it evolved into having pictures in it, but it wasn't when it first started, when I first started writing those things, they didn't have pictures. So how did it happen that the pictures came along? Yeah, I have no, I, you know what? I think it was just something that and I was, I had posted things that I <laughs> never had in the Thank you, Judy. All right, I'm so you're saying, Chris, did you want to say something, sir? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm getting that there's a sense that, um, the poems are related somehow. They're the same subject, the same form. Or if they're not related, what's pulling your reader through to the end? Yeah, that's a good question, Chris. What do you say, Marvin? Well, you know what? I, for me, I think it it's, has to be what you write. You know, I think that if... It, it, you could put a poem in any format, and I guess it's your reader that likes your poetry, and that sort of a, at a time is just going to hold them. I guess I, I can't honestly answer what you know by putting it in a libretto why someone will read your poetry straight through. I think mm -hmm. it's just so appealing to it; it just makes it that much more compact. For me, I, it's hard for me to answer that. I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Okay, okay. I know this is a new invention and everything, and right now you're kind of open to ideas. <laughs> but you've been a little bit impatient. I can say this. You, you, you want people to catch on to this, but we've got to educate the public, and our one of the first steps is we're doing this episode of Mechanics of Poetry to do that. Uh, Chris is asking a very good question here, because uh, in, the, in the poetry world, the chapbook these publishers seem to prefer themed chapbooks. That seems to be the preference. I, I, if, any, if I'm wrong, tell me, please, anybody. But that seems to be what's preferred, themed chapbooks. Uh, I mean, you can have your own theme, but it's like uh, it's like having a story or something, you know? It's like a, reading a, a micro novel chapbook. I can see um, what tickles me is the idea of, um, what if I don't have 50 pages of a to say mm -hmm. about a particular subject? 
Yeah. I personally do have uh, six poems on a particular poem subject. Probably will be 10 in that series. Not enough to make a chapbook out of, but I would want to present them as a whole. So I'm hearing this as a good possibility for, for doing just that. They happen to be related to each other in theme and in form. Um, so I think they would be nice as a whole. But um, do we want to take the responsibility to set the expectations for what a libretto should be or do? Um, yeah, we can get, let's get into the history a little bit of the word libretto for that matter. I mean, uh, if you've heard of the word libretto before, it's because it's been used in programs for operatic performances, for example, where the lyrics would be printed out in a booklet and that would be a libretto to follow along. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. libretto, okay? But when Marvin came up with this idea, which you described pretty well, Chris, right? It's, it's shorter, you know. He had to name it. Am I right about that, Marvin? Yeah, there, I did not read, well, like I said, I just got lost in the writing of it, the writings. Um, I didn't think it would need a, a name until you mentioned, you know, what are these things? And I was still lost in just the writing of it. I didn't, I didn't know what to call it. But I knew it wasn't a chat book and I knew it wasn't a broadside. So, is it possible for me to take credit for the word libretto? Is yeah, that true? yeah, because yeah, you said back in the day you worked at some theater. I worked at the music center. center. Yeah, that's why I know about librettos. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, I'll take that little bit of credit, but definitely I was impressed that this is it fits a niche that uh, hasn't been fit, fitted before. I've just never seen it anywhere. And 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 the benefit that came from it unintentionally again is that. With the libretto, if you keep it in um, multiples of four, you can print it out. So it doesn't have oh, okay. yeah, yeah. as long as 16, whatever, you know, you can go all, all the way down to a libretto of, of this a four page libretto. That, that so can be folded like a booklet, right? Right. right. Yeah, we better get, you know, maybe showing them is a good idea. Do you have a sample libretto you can show them? And um, yeah. So Let's do that. Let's do that. Enough talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> so with this libretto here, I knew I was going to be reading today. And um, I guess about a month ago, I stepped back from the Zoom scene just to take a look at myself and the world around me. And I hadn't written any librettos. So I, um, when this opportunity came up, I wrote this libretto. And tell me when to start reading, Don, okay? Um, an inner plateau, a poetic libretto. Oh, it's not on screen share? I thought it was. I'm up. No, no screen share. I don't see it. Anybody see it? Nobody sees it. We want to see this cap. Hmm, how do we do this? You, you shared it just a minute ago. I'll try it again. There we go. Okay. Okay. Like I was saying, I hadn't written any librettos and I wrote this because um, it was a good time to start writing again. An inner plateau, a poetic libretto. Road trip with wings, who brings paper, who brings pen? Never better friend than climbing higher. And this is one of the pictures that I take with that camera. And um, these B-52, bombers or whatever they are fly over my house all the time and I've been trying to catch this picture so I heard it coming and I ran outside I took that picture and did some filtering and wrote that poem now remember I said it was a um, new plateau or whatever in this book but that doesn't mean I walk on water yet. no matter how hard I try to look at the good things in my life there's always some ignorance filled asshole looking to lose his life because they ain't taking mine. I swear to my almighty, all powerful, all knowing, everywhere, all at once, God. I swear if I had been armed, I would have shot that son of a bitch in his head. Oof. 
Now, this is the poem that I was talking about. I uh, gave him a, a picture. He wrote the poem. I'm going to read it. Is that okay, Don? Can I read it? Sure. <laughs> um, path, a Kingfisher poem. The sky in my eyes is an orange. Telephone poles in a row transmit my loneliness. This pebbly road to oblivion. Only the bushes I encounter interest me. That and the hills on the horizon I will never reach. And that's the picture he wrote that poem for. Yeah, that's the picture you sent me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The picture. Uh, next little poem, whatever here. Under clouds, setting sun, I've become one myself, the lovely side of me. Um, that was just a sunset. And then I did that filtering with the uh, camera to give me that picture. Rustling through some trees, my God, followed by some bees. Same thing, it's, uh, um, some filter on the camera. To have or to have not and be the same man is the challenge at hand. Who can say they understand a poet? There's that guy. He's everywhere I go. Sure, good field being back home under these green skies, me in a peaceful place. That's the camera with a crazy filter on it. From high wire, they jump a stump in my head. I wonder, odd colored clouds, silent thunder, blundering, I blink. This is another one of the funky pictures. These blackbirds in the afternoons hang out outside. I waited for them to start moving around. I took a picture and threw this filter on it. Yeah, Google's not sure. It says maybe an image of birds in the sky. <laughs> In my, in my mind, newly planted seeds, I'm no fool, my heart still bleeds. Hunkered down behind six foot fence, locked gate, I own the ground I'm praying on. There's another picture with that funky filter. Hey stranger, no time, no see, I said to my reflection in the high desert afternoon sky. Another picture, just put a filter on it. And that's an inner plateau of Bobby John Press libretto. Yeah, so that was pretty painless. We went through it very fast there. And, and, and I think that's the natural progression, really when it's in the ebook form. And I think right now that we're all locked down and we can't really get out is for me, it's been really nice to um, have the libretto like that where I can send it out to people and they can still get it without me having to go to a reading and have to hand them a hard copy of it. And uh, again, I want to underline the Zoom aspect of this. Uh, what? Oh, people don't just hear your poetry, they see it. What is your purpose between the behind the narrow columns and the busted up words. I don't get that at all. Oh yeah, your style. Judy's asking about your style. Why are the words broken up sometimes? Um, can, can we go back and you, and you point it out for me? Would that be okay? Sure. Tell me when to stop. I'm coming from the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I, well, you gotta put it back on the screen. You need to screen share again. Screen share. Dead. Screen share. I thought I did. No, no, no. Yeah, hold on. Oh, shit. Now? Nope. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um. Where'd it go? Maybe that's it. Waiting for the screen. Yeah. Yeah, there okay. we go. Okay. Are you here, Judy? Go ahead. Hey. I think. Okay, go ahead. Keep going. There's one. There you go. There's one. Okay. Two. So, yeah. um, you know, it's really funny how reading other people's poetry influences us, influences us. And maybe my mind was just kind of whatever. 
but I have been reading a couple of poets who did that blind dash. And for me, the main reason I started doing it was because um, it helps me read slower. You know, um, the look on the page, I liked. <laughs> um, it, was, it was unintentional to do it, but I liked doing it because it helped me slow down. And there's times in it where I liked the way it looked on the page. Okay. So now you, you have a very vertical format. I mean, if you were to print this out, would it be like a book or would it still be like one page at a time? You know what? Um, we've, I've, I've tried to print one out. I believe Don has. We've worked out some glitches in the printing aspect of the librettos, but it's been an easy fix so far. Don, did you get a chance to print one out? Uh, no, but we can do that today. We can do that today. Live. We can do that live. Here's the thing. I mean, you were talking about this and I'm sure it hasn't gotten across. Uh, the libretto, you prefer, right? Marvin's the inventor. He prefers that the libretto is in a four, eight, 12, or 16 pages long because it's printable as a booklet. That's okay. the only reason for that. And it's a short thing anyway, and it does or does not have to have photos and you know you can have your own style and do whatever you want, as long as it fits in that space, because that's okay. the creative space. But, but, yes, but your libretto is so full of pictures, you don't, you don't have 16 pages of poetry. Yeah, how many pages was that the one that you showed for demonstration? Uh, how many uh, pages? Um, it's 16 pages. Right, so including all the pictures. Mm -hmm. yeah which is not a lot of poetry. Um, you know what? It's, it's really funny because Coco made a libretto. Her her, her, her libretto is packed with poetry. Well, with she, she, she has a lot of words. Well, well, <laughs> <laughs> do I do? <laughs> you know, but, but I mean, but I've, I've seen five different librettos over the last week. The first five, by the way, from and, anyone and, other than you and me. Yeah. And the libretto is holding all their poetry really nicely. I mean, uh, two of the guys are here who have put in librettos, and I'm I'm not trying to I'm I'm really not trying to push the idea on anybody. I'm just sharing it. I'm just asking, just asking but, questions. Yeah, but I mean, it, the libretto is holding what as as far as I can see right now. Um. A couple of different styles of writing, the libretto has held run nicely. You know, Stephanie uh, put one in with just her haiku and photos. So I have a, a couple of questions. This is really fascinating. Um, I've been doing a lot of listening. Uh, so originally before this session, uh, Marvin, you had shared, um, like in other sessions, you referenced libretto and you did show some of the examples of the work. And I actually had assumed that the libretto, because I didn't know anything about it, was not so much about the length of the booklet, so to speak, but that it was that unique style of, of poetry that you had. So I was envisioning <laughs> all librettos, skinny, vertical poems, very, very short, uh, and always with a photo. I think what I'm hearing today is well, I'm not sure what I'm hearing. So, so is it that there is room for some variety or is it recommended that you sort of have that look and feel and font size? I mean, just kind of talk to me, assume I know nothing and maybe help guide me on, on what you're in. Which is all of us. <laughs> the size of it, the size of it, I, I think it, it feels good, okay? Because it, um, it it's printable and it's, you're not going to put um, so you have to have to put so much in it. So that the, the amount of pages is kind of uh, firm, but what you put in it, it's your you can put anything you want in it. You honestly can. You can you put your poetry in it. You know, once you send it to me, you know, there's some formatting issues where you know it might be on one page or um, two or three pages or whatever it is, but. Whatever your poetry style is, from what I see right now, fits a libretto. Am I right, Don? Well, I got an idea. Is I want to convert Linda. She's she's <laughs> my objective today. She's my barometer. Linda is the barometer. She's 
Well, she's seen your poetry, though. She's not totally clueless. <laughs> but what, I'm, what I mean is this. I'm going to build a libretto right now in front of everybody. Then there'll be no question. And this is hearkening back to what happened last night, which I never explained, because I was too busy trying to get there. <laughs> so this guy, the sneaky guy, one that made the website with like, how many photos are on that website? Uh, pull up 55 poems. 55, thank you, Dean. 55 photos, okay? What's the website? Oh, that's a cornucopia. That's way too much, absolutely. And uh, I thought, well, you know, I'll try to do one. You know, I did one before, right? It worked with the path. Uh, he gave me a photo and I wrote a poem. Okay, I'll try it again. So I thought, well, I'll be beneficent. I'll start at the back, right? Leave the front for anybody who just stumbles in this thing. So I went all the way to the back to the very last photo. Oh man, I got so supercharged with this last photo. I wrote a poem on the spot. It was just so easy. Hmm. And then I saw the photo above it. Oh yeah, I wanna try that one too. I wrote that one too. Oh wow, this is working. Two poems, uh, that usually doesn't happen to me. I'm happy when I get one. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I was really tired. This was like, yeah, that's right. When the TVs are off, you have that sound, you know? It was between one and three in the morning this morning. One and three in the morning this morning is when I wrote 10 poems. I was so jazzed that he had such a variety of photos. He takes great pictures. Don't take my word for it, ask Dean. <laughs> so I just want to show you, I, I've started to build a libretto, but I didn't have time because I had to take somebody to the airport just before getting here. So I'm gonna bring it up. And were your poems all in that, that same format? The narrow columns and the... Well, hopefully they will be, because I'm gonna build it here right now. That's just kind of the, the daring of so, it. I, so I know it's 10 poems, that, that much so I know. So saying that should be the format of a libretto? Well, yeah, you're going to see, I'm going to build it right now. It, right. it should be. Uh, yes. Okay, that leaves me. I don't write like that. <laughs> no, I, I think Judy has All a right. good question, but uh, I think it's it's not a line breaking format that's uh, critical. Yeah, you know, here, this should hopefully answer your questions. Okay, so I'm starting a libretto and I'm breaking some of Marvin's rules already. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, I got uh, a headline, cover page, whatever you want to call it. And I took a photo that I did not use for the cover because I had to save the photos for the, you know, the ones I did use. And so me, since I'm so used to making chapbooks, I'm a chapbook publisher, I made a table of contents, which Marvin abhors. And, and, and so hold on, hold on one second there, because the librettos don't have a table of contents. So what Don is showing you guys is not a libretto. <laughs> honestly, the, and I'm not the, what honestly, the? because because it doesn't have a table of contents. You know Man, that. You're a cruel dude. It's not a libretto. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna continue because <laughs> this is the way I do it. Okay, this is the way I do it. You can make a libretto your way. I'll make it. Well, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All right, so I'm just proving there's 10 poems, okay? And I like to put the date of when I write things. And you'll notice nine of the poems were written on the same date today, this morning. And Path was written 11 days ago when he gave me that photo, okay? So it's proof, okay, proof. And I called it a poetic colib, colib I can barely say it. A poetic colib, colibretoation is <laughs> here. Because it's Marvin's photos and my poems, okay? That's why it's a poetic collaboration. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, this is the last photo on the website, right? No, no, this is uh, the one that was written before, Path, yeah, 11 days ago. So that's the photo he sent to me, and then I wrote the poem, and it all fit on one page. I was all happy, you know, make the photo big, and the poem is the normal font, okay? And then this is the last picture from the website, which we're going to give the address to later on this meeting. 
All right, so there's a picture. And I was really jazzed because those clouds were so distinctive to me. And so I wrote, Welkin. And that's a word most people don't know. Anybody know the word Welkin? I learned it uh, about 40 years ago when I was trying to come up with uh, smart words. My professor had told me at Cal State LA, uh, you know, you should try to throw in a vocabulary word in there. It might uh, help your chances of getting published. <laughs> but I, I followed his advice. I put a fancy word in there and I got published. So he was right. So the word was Welkin. And Welkin is a, an archaic word. It's a word people don't use anymore. And it means the vault of heaven, the sky. All right, so that's what this picture is to me, Welkin. I'll even read it since I have a moment. Uh, the golden orange sets gathered clouds on fire every day like briquettes. So when I looked at those clouds, it made me think of briquettes. Trees silhouette like burned ashes we observe with our under 100 degree eyes. So the, the trees are in silhouette, right? Ashes in color. I'm observing this with my eyes, which are approximately under 100 degrees. Is that correct? Eyes are about room uh, body temperatures. I don't know. The spectrum of the sky from red horizon to blue space and breathe in the invisible. Okay, so I was feeling good there. Wrote a poem. Then I looked at the next picture. Oh, it's not here. Right? I'm using the template from one of my chapbooks because I want this to be printable. Uh, normally a chapbook has to also be printable. So you need to have an even number of pages in really a set of four. So it's 20 pages, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, like that, for a chapbook. And uh, on Word, you can format for booklet printing. When you uh, bring up your file, you go to print and the box comes up and you can set up the page for booklet printing. It's one of the choices, book fold. So then the page becomes just the right size. It's half a page, okay? And whatever you put in there is gonna be printable in a booklet. All right, so this is material from a previous chapbook. So I'm going to uh, grab the next poem. Yeah, I really didn't have time to do this, so I'm doing it now. And I hope it's not too boring for people. But just to demonstrate real quick. Okay. If you want to say something, Marvin, while I'm pulling up my poem, go right ahead. Are there any questions? It's a good time for that, I think. Oh, this actually yes, to me like a mini chat book as opposed to anything different. Judy, I didn't hear. I didn't hear the whole question. Well, this, this, what you're presenting here, Don, is, you know, every poem has a title. You have a table of contents. This is a chapbook, except it doesn't have enough pages. I mean, what? So, what makes this? What makes a libretto different from this? Or, you know. Good question, Judy and and Marvin. What's the answer? You know what. That for me, the, the, the only difference right now with this and a libretto is that the libretto normally doesn't have the table of contents. And do the poems have titles? Uh, you know what, Judy? I have written some librettos that do, oh. but when I got down to it, and this is just my preference, mm -hmm. when I got to a point and um, I think it was, as I, as they were re, the librettos were like defining themselves, I did take out any titles. And what I would do, I would think that the reader would know when one poem ended by the picture with the picture. But the, I don't normally anymore put titles in, but if I was to create a libretto for someone else and they wanted their title in the libretto, I would put that there. But I wouldn't put a table of contents. Okay, and, and are, again, are, are all the poems basically the same thing? Um, you know what? My mind runs so crazy at times, Judy. I could write a libretto in like a couple of hours that have a t from from dirt in the ground to uh, everything in between and something else. 
So, so it doesn't have to be all the same. No, you can put whatever topic you want in your libretto, you can put it in there. My my thing is, I my mind is always running, so I'm always writing. So I, I, I've never had to sit down or wanted to sit down and just write um, a libretto of one topic, but I'm sure you could. I have a couple of quick questions. Um, yes, so, no, no. yeah. Um, so let's say I was going to work on some librettos. Is it that they need to synchronize with images that are on or are going to be on the libretto website or do you work with other people's images for I, example i have i've had you know the the, the um, five people who are published on sat this saturday did send me their photos with their poetry okay but, okay and the picture is not of necessity. You know, if, if some people don't want to put pictures, you know, um, I just started doing it, but it's not, you know, a photo is not a necessity of a libretto. Right, right, understood. And then I have a second question. Um, so I, I typically don't write, you know, I don't do acrostic poems, right? But I tried a couple of times, excuse me, recently. And what I find for me is that when I look at an image, I don't end up writing about that image. The image takes me somewhere else and then I'm writing the poem that isn't necessarily related to the image, which of course means that unnamed other publications were like, oh, nope, don't want it, thank you. However, um, what, what I'm wondering is, um, let's say looked at an image on the website that's going to be launched, use that as a, starting off point to write something is not at all, there may be some vague connection, but it's not about the image. Is that still legitimate? I think you say, but I'm asking just to try to repeat, it's still legitimate libretto within. Um, uh, of course. Yeah, Cause and, it's and, not, yeah, you don't have to even have an image as you said. Okay. And I hope you do go to the website. I hope you do find a picture that you can maybe be inspired by. But if you, if you go there and you find a picture and you write a poem about it, just leave them, you know, that's fine. It doesn't have to be all about the sunset or about the <laughs> you know I mean? <laughs> and, and then finally, so, so well, finally for now, because some new questions may pop up later on, but I may look at an image and either because of the filtering or maybe how an image was taken, I am thinking that it is something that in the end it is not. <laughs> and so uh, I'm, I'm seeing something and I'm going, oh, this is what it is. And I'm writing something. It turns out it has nothing to do with the image on the screen. Has that happened with others? And, and what do you do under those circumstances? You know what? The, the, you know what? The, the website went up yesterday. Mm -hmm. So I can't say I've had that experience where Got I took a picture of the moon and someone thought it was an eyeball. Right, right. <laughs> Which, which is yeah. what I would end up doing. I would be looking at the moon and I would go, oh, that reminds me of an eye and a dream that I had, and, you know, so. <laughs> no, but I think that's the beauty in it. Okay. Because I'm a, we all see this, the same thing differently. And I like that the, the individual interpretation of it. Hmm. Yeah, and when it comes to ekphrastic poetry, uh, there are as many ways to do an ekphrastic poem as there are people doing ekphrastic poems. Really, that's the way to look at it. There's no one way. Uh, some do it this way, some do it that way. If it's inspired by art, it's ekphrastic. Simple as that. And uh, <laughs> Marvin seems to uh, favor for himself, you know, including these uh, pictures, but uh, as to uh, whether the poem is inspired by the picture or not, that's that's something only Marvin can answer. It's funny because some if when, if you get a chance to go to the um to, to the website, you'll notice that there's some pictures that are filtered. There's some that are not. There's some that's, that's original as I took the picture. So it's not all, all of them aren't filtered and stuff. I guess just trying to give pictures. <laughs> and, and when you when you talk about the librettos that have been published of other people, you're talking about publishing them on this website. No, they're they're being published on the Bobby John Press. That's my website, but without an ISBN number. Yeah, yeah. 
So this is probably a good time to show them the website. I got the website ready to screen share and they can okay. see exactly what you're talking about. But uh, Judy's, I'm gonna, I dig everything Judy says actually, because I disobeyed the rules of the libretto, putting a table of contents in my libretto. Mortal <laughs> sin, I'm going to hell. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I gladly go to hell for that reason, right? I do it my way. Just like, uh, who's that guy? Paul Anka. Yeah, just like Paul Anka. And then, of course, uh, the other thing Judy said, okay, so these things are published. Where are they? You know what? Um, as of right now, the um, because we have it, because the first five were for the contest. I haven't announced those yet. Once I do announce them, I'll maybe put them on the um, the website. Or you know, the beauty of it is once the libretto is completed, I send you back the PDF. It's yours. You can share it to anyone you want to. You know, my website is so small. I would doubt if anyone would go there to look for your libretto, but I would put it on the website. And how, how, would, how, how, would, how would this publication by Bobby John Press affect you using these poems somewhere else? Like if you wanted to put them in you know, a chapbook or, 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 or another book um, that you're actually gonna publish with, you know, with all the proper- That's another good question. Very good question. So your question is, what would I do with the, the libretos once they were done? Was that the question? I'm sorry. And now the question is, for instance, if, if, if I were to send you the libretto and you published it, and if I wanted to use one or two of the poems from that libretto in another book that I was actually going to publish with all the proper protocols, could I do that? You keep all the rights to your libretto, every poem in it, everything. I don't do it. No. You, yeah, you, some publishers, some publishers are particular about it, some are not. Uh, if you have a collection of poems, let's say 32 poems, uh -huh. and then you create a book that has 64 poems, and those 32 poems are in the book of 64 poems, most editors will be okay with that because it's being published in a different form. Some are not okay with that. You need to know your publishers. Well, well, the question is here. So here's another question then. If I if I were to if you were to publish a libretto of mine, which is not, I guess, not actually published because it doesn't have the proper protocols, would that be considered published by a legitimate publisher who we you know insists on an ISBN number or whatever? Can I take this one, Marvin? Let me take this one. There's a great <laughs> example in history of uh, a poet you might have heard of who published a, a little book called Songs of Innocence and Experience. He made uh, 24 copies, handmade, hand-painted, and uh, you might have heard of him, William Blake. That was the extent that his poems were published in his lifetime. They're very rare commodities. The Huntington Library has one of them. And uh, is that publishing? I don't know. We still talk about them 200 years later. Maybe well, but, it is. But, okay, but, but the question is, if you were to send it to, I don't know the name of it, say um, Red Hen Press, for instance, okay? Um, would, would the librettos be considered previously published if they're looking for, un, for poems that are not previously published? That's my question. That's all a big... In the, it depends. <laughs> uh, there are some things that I've run into, some uh, magazines, online publishers. I haven't tried with a um, hard book publisher, but they will say if it has appeared on the internet, that's publishing for their purposes and they won't take it. Um, and by that, they mean everything from appearing in somebody's online magazine to um, you posting it on your Facebook page yeah. so that other people can read it. That's right. Some editors do specify if it's on your Facebook page, they don't want to see it. Which is why I don't put my poetry on, the, on, on, fa on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Some do, some don't. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Where are we now? Have we uh, 
Sorry. <laughs> oh, 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 here's, oh, here's one wait, thing that wait, we need to make clear. Questions. One thing to make clear. Great question. Saturday, here. this Saturday is the day that Marvin is going to reveal the winner of the libretto contest. There are five entries. One will be the winner, but he wants to publish all five. So he's publishing all five. And we're gonna have a reading on May 22nd to showcase those five. Okay, so in a sense, they're all winners, but he's gonna name one winner, even if he doesn't feel like it. Right, Marvin? That's a tough task, finding a winner. Tough task. I have to do it for chapbooks and books myself for Saturday. And today is Thursday, so be ready. Okay. Um, can, can so you, we showed them. We have showed them the website yet? We haven't showed them. We have we it. No. All right. Let's do that. Then they can, if they want to, check it out. You know, I want it to be in this recording. This is being recorded, so it'll be on YouTube. People can watch it, this video at their leisure anytime in their pajamas or even naked. <laughs> I'm just holding that thought for a moment. Or just on top, like you are on Zoom. <laughs> All right. Can All right, so the, here comes the website. the website address in the chat? This is Marvin's website. Want to talk about it, Marvin? You know what? Um, I look, I mean, I just threw this together to get the um, some pictures to um, the other libretto holders. But I put 56 poems out. Can you move it down to that other page, John? OK, oh, to a different page? Yeah. There's three pages. Is there all these but, pictures that yeah, I the photos are clickable. You just go read more, and then the photo gets bigger. See, then you can see so the photo. Wait, but maybe this will inspire poetic, you to create oh, a poem. The poetic libretto blogspot.com. That's the, that's the website. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. The poetic libretto dot blogspot dot com. And, and it's, uh, it's just it's just fun, I guess. You know, I've already gotten some. Can we read one of the poems, Don? Well, I'm going to find one. Yeah, I don't know if there's any on the first that page. Cat one. Go, that's, uh, I believe it's Mark Fisher's, the cat one. You just passed it. There's no poem with that cat. There was. Yeah, there was. was? Yes. Uh-oh. This is uh, new to me, then. Back to the cat. Oh, yes, there is. OK. And that is it's not my poem. Whose is it? Good. Yeah, he's here. Mark, go ahead. There's a ghost in the rocking chair, and the green-eyed tortoise shell sits in its lap. I like how you use the tortoise because that's a torty. The cat. It was what? It's a torty. That's the cat type of cat that is. Oh well. I was inspired. He was inspired. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it at that. That's a cool book. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So 55 photos. It fits on three pages. And then you go to the bottom. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I'm in the middle of a poem here, so I got to get out of it. Okay. Now back to the page. Are we back on the page? Yeah. So you get to the bottom, and you're going to go to... Yeah. Bottom, we can get there. A lot of photos. The suspense is killing me. <clears throat> there it is. At the bottom, more posts. You just hit more posts and you get to the next page. More photos. Okay. So be inspired. <laughs> Let me bless you. Thank you. You wanted to say something, Marvin? Go ahead. Yeah, I just said, be inspired. It's fun. It's cool. Thanks. Yeah, these are a really cool set of photos. That's for sure. These computer and these photos are posted simply for inspiration, or yes. Okay. <laughs> and you can post your poem. Like here's one. Who's this? It's like me again. <laughs> well, you, you've done more than two. See, last time I saw you had two. You've got more than two. This is fantastic. I got three Man. now. Can you okay, read? Go ahead. It? 
So you can make One a comment. Minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. No, I thought you weren't going to read it. So I was saying, oh, I, I if you were inspired it. to write a poem, you can make a comment just like Mark did. Put your poem by the picture. And now Marvin, I mean Marvin, no, Mark is going to read it. Go ahead. Seeing lavender in the emerald city, un un unconscious eyes made you blind to the road all cracked and gritty and the walls built to keep you thinking the world's all pretty and empathy's not worth the time it takes to make it through committee, just another vote to decline, sanctifying abnormality. Wonderful. A quick question. So um, for folks who go in and post here, so let's say this is there, um, this scene, and someone else comes along and says, oh, let me drop one in, tied to the same image. They would just sort of stack one on top of each other, almost as though you would have like communications similar to social media. You, you know what? Thought, you know, like how does that work? I'm just curious. I am too, now that you ask. <laughs> 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 because, because, you know, if two people are inspired by that same picture, I want them to still be able to um, write their own poem. I'm going to have to figure out how that works because mm. I haven't, it went up yesterday. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Well, why not to... just post whatever whatever comes for that picture on the same page? I, you know? I'm not sure if you can. Can you, Don? Can you... I'm sorry. What was the question? I mean, it says comment, so scroll down. No, it's... right. It's it's functioning more like say um, IG or Facebook as opposed to maybe like a fully built out website where you have lots of archived. No, no, because, it, right? because the idea is so the idea is once I get like what with the new pop with the new librettos, they're gonna each pick two. I'm gonna take those poems off and put them in a libretto. So I'm you know, so maybe maybe in a week I got another 10 people with 20 poems, I can make two more librettos for them or something like that. But right now, this website was for um the people with the librettos to go in and get some poems off for the next libretto. But now that you guys are here, you guys, how many people have the libretto now? I mean, this website, 10 people now, I guess. So there's not a lot of people who have the link to this website yet. That's right. You too can have a poem on this website. All you have to do is <laughs> look at a freaking picture, man. If you get a poem, put it up. Yeah. Okay. But Marvin created this just for the five people, and now the cat's out of the bag. You people are getting in on the ground floor. That's right, Linda Crawford is in on the ground floor of this whole poetic libretto explosion. The size <laughs> I between- keep, I keep hearing my name a lot, so. <laughs> You're my barometer, Linda. You're my barometer. There's between a broadside and a chapbook, right? Broadside one poem, chapbook, usually 20 pages or more. That seems to be the usual definition of a chapbook. Anything smaller is like, what is that, a micro chapbook? Or, that's almost another name for what this is. <laughs> I can't say that in front of Marvin, he gets mad, okay. Mm. <laughs> but, but the micro chapbook would have a table of contents. <laughs> but, bring up table of contents, he gets very angry. Okay. Yeah, because that's, it. I don't get angry about it. It's not that you can put a table of contents into a libretto, I guess, but it wouldn't it be a tree. It wouldn't be what my vision was of a poetic libretto. It, it seems oh, to me. Can I say that? Wait, wait. Can I say that without coming off of being mad? <laughs> yeah, no. It seems to me that the libretto is just a little bit more informal. Hey, that's a good way of looking at it. Hey, and think? honestly, I'm just asking: is that a good thing or a bad thing, Judy? <laughs> it depends on one's personality. I think it depends so, on your mood. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people are so serious. If it doesn't have an ISBN number, it wasn't published. Go tell that to William Blake, you know, yeah. a lot of other poets. Uh, Emily Dickinson, she never heard of an ISBN number, but you heard of her. Oh, well, that's so, true. That, that's a relatively whatever 20th century thing, isn't it? Yeah. Is that for the better? Mm. I don't know. We'll find out, I guess, when we all die and who gets I mean, in the old that. days, the masters didn't get ISBN numbers, you know. But I had an ISBN number. Oh. <laughs> I, I do have to say though although um uh, marvin although you've you've kind of indicated that you know there's there's a lot of leeway 
I, I actually like the way that you put your librettos together because mm -hmm. I am enamored of, but I've told you that before, of, the, of your style of writing and how you visually present the work, even the quirky breaks. I mean, I just, I get it and I love them. Um, so to me, if someone is going to work with this style, then the pleasure in it is, sorry, Dawn, and to heck with the table of contents and <laughs> go with the smaller um, poems and you know set aside those seven stands of poems for a different environment and you're just interesting slice of life poems that you could spend years trying to think what can I title this little five line poem and in the end you say you know what it's just untitled um, so so there's something to be said for for what you're what you're what you're doing Marvin I, I must say yeah yeah and you know the most important thing you underlined it very well is that people get to see this poetry right. normally I was just at a reading some big uh, hootie tootie reading you know somebody won an award and stuff and and they're reading their poems you know but depending on the quality of your hearing you're going to catch all the words or not but exactly. if you can hear and see hear Marvin and see Marvin's poetry at the same time you're getting the full experience mm -hmm. right that is the result of this whole Zoom thing. And, it, and it, I think it's kind of cool because I think eventually we're going to be able to go back and do some live readings. And I think it would be real cool to bring a handful of librettos to, you know, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to get rich off of being, being a <laughs> poet. That's why I'm just giving it away anyway. But yeah, I think it's going to be cool to go to an open reading with a handful of librettos and pass them out. So when I go up to read, some people have it in the audience. That's, that's, but that's me, that's just me, you know? Like I said, I can't wait to go out to an open reading and have a handful of librettos. Is there a possibility, you just hinted at it, Helen, that the website or some other form like YouTube may have it so you can see and hear the poem at the same time? So there would be a button on with each poem that you could hit and you'd hear the author say, reading it. Um, so you do get both the visual and the oral experience. Okay, hey, I think we've covered pretty much everything we can cover unless you can think of something else, Marvin. What do you think? No, I'm, I don't think so. Any more questions? I'm good. Okay, so we know where to find you. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, Judy. Good to see you. I just think what Marvin's created is a very cool thing. I think it's a very cool thing. Absolutely. It's 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 the right size for a feature, and uh, it's it's a great thing you can email to a friend. Right? It's just it's a friendly thing. Really nice, and I I, I want to see it become popular. That's why I'm helping them out with this. Yeah, I want to see this. Yeah. Then get so, rid of your table of contents, Don. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to make a special edition of my libretto without a table of contents. <laughs> to satisfy those people. All right, but anyway, uh, we're Thanks, starting to run out of time as it is. Uh, but thank you everyone for helping give birth in your own individual way to the poetic libretto, the creation of Marvin Lewis Dorsey, now forever enshrined in a YouTube video that'll be debuting in about two hours. So there'll be photographic proof. This is the guy that came up with the idea. And uh, maybe you wanna try it yourself now that you know a little bit more about what it is, right, Linda? Of course. Of course. <laughs> I tend, I tend to write very, sh well, I mean, the, on Instagram, all I will post is images of really, really sh small poems of mine, you know, four lines, maybe six lines, that sort of thing. So that's why I'm saying that I, I feel what Marvin is, is, is trying to do and what he's talking about, because I will only put on IG just those little ones, you know, just no click through to anything larger. It's just, boom, very quick, very short. Yeah, oh, there, there's the Twitter poems, right? There's Twitter poems, right? So many characters. Yeah. That concept, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Uh, and uh, every Thursday, we at noon, we tape uh, episodes of Mechanics of Poetry. And on Tuesdays, I post what the question will be. So I don't know right now what the next episode will be. But my plan is to have more in-depth discussion of the poems themselves. I'm going to interview some writers and so we can really see the nuts and bolts of how they're creating their poetry. And we've just started that today with Marvin Dorsey. And thank you all for being here. I'm going to conclude the recording.